Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff in which I'm going to blow your mind with 10 different methods, 10 different methods to harmonize your single note soloing. We're going to take a very simple solo, just a sequence, okay, just E, F sharp and G, and I'm going to show you 10 different ways to harmonize it, including fourths, thirds, Sixth harmonies, you have okay, transitional chords that you can use. You can use octaves. Okay, octaves are widely used in jazz. You have uh, reversed thirds. And you have all sorts of bass lines that you can do. You can do this, okay, which is diatonical, which is relating to a scale. Okay, any scale you'd like to relate to, you can have the fifth of that scale as your bass, okay, and have a really nice sound. These were two different examples. And you can have, you can have, okay, different sounds. When you just move one note around, you can get, you can get this, you can get, it can get more sophisticated sound. Ten different ways to harmonize your solos. I'm going to walk you through each and every one of these, but I would like to remind you first, in case you missed the video last month, that Lick and Riff has a really nice offer from DistroKid. It's a music distribution service which gets your music. If you have original music, you can get it into iTunes and Spotify and Pandora and YouTube and any service, any musical service with just one click. You just upload your album through DistroKid and get your music everywhere, everywhere. It's insane and they're, uh, they're pretty cheap to start with, but I got you a 50% discount as well. So click the link below in the description, grab your 50% discount for DistroKid, the music distribution service. It's, it's an insane offer, insane. It's $10, $10 for a whole year's membership. You can grab your first year of DistroKid membership and distribute your music everywhere, including a Spotify verified account. That's worth the $10 alone, I think. Um, just go and grab it and then come back and learn 10 ways to harmonize your solos. So, um, the first, um, first let's learn the sequence. It's five, seven, and eight on the second string. Okay, I could do it on zero, two, and three on the first. Okay, but then I wouldn't have high notes. So, okay, five, seven, and eight on the first string. Okay, now the first, um, the, the easiest way to harmonize would be the same fret on the first string and then you get a fourth harmony. Okay, which is useful. It's pretty useful if you want, okay, if you want a blues-like solo. Okay, it's nice. Okay, fourths are very simple, but they're beautiful. Okay, especially in context when you have music in the background. And uh, those are fourths, right? If you want a fifth, then you just do a power chord move. Okay, now during solos, this might be surprisingly effective. Okay, it's two frets apart. Okay, during solos, um, this uh, is a very, very well-kept secret by soloists worldwide. Soloists... Okay, use this interval. Okay. Okay. As a soloing tool, and uh, most of us uh, guitar students don't really know about this. Uh, so the fifth is also a very, very good option. Okay, now you can, of course, mix between the two. Okay, between fourths and fifths. Okay, and then you get a complex solo, and it's really, really easy to execute. Now, the, um, 
the go-to harmony that everyone uses most of the time is the third harmony. Okay, if we have five, seven, and eight on the second string, okay, then it's gonna be two frets below or one fret below the note, depending on the scale. So we're gonna harmonize it like this. Okay, this is the third harmony. And then we're gonna harmonize it from below. Okay? That's a different harmony. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a third, but it's a different sound. Okay? It's the same harmony technically, but it's a different harmony. So um, you have three and five on strings one and two. Then you have five and seven. And then you have seven and eight. Okay? And again, you can do it as single notes. Okay, play around with it. That's the go-to harmony. From below, it would sound like this. Okay? It's gonna be the same fret. It's gonna be five and five on strings two and three. Then it's gonna be seven and seven. And then it's gonna be eight and nine. Okay, so. Now, what happens if you combine the two? If you combine the two, you get chords, right? You have, five, uh, you have three, five, and five. Okay? You have five, seven, and seven. And then you have seven, eight, and nine. So that's another way to harmonize with chords. Okay, so it's. And of course. Okay, you can create a solo out of that as well. So uh, that's another way to harmonize chords. Now, the other chordal option is a go-to chord. Now in jazz, when you want to uh, harmonize with a chord, most of the time you'll go for kind of a diminished chord. So let's take the half diminished chord. Okay? Now you can take a diminished chord but that's way too heavy and it won't fit any solo, but the half diminished chord, it would, it would fit most solo. So it's five on the second string and then it's four, five, four. So it's five, four, five, four. Then you take it two frets up when you have seven on the second string. So it's seven, six, seven, six. And then it's eight, seven, eight, seven. Okay, so. Now, there are many other chords you can use. You can use a flat chord, just one finger. You can do... Okay, this is also a jazz sound. I have a whole lesson on this harmony. It's called the one finger jazz chord. I highly recommend it. You can use different bass notes for this. Uh, okay. Okay, and it's just one finger but you hear different chords. So you can use one finger, okay? And those are the, the go-to harmonies that I do when I want to instantly harmonize a chord without getting way, way too complex. Now, you have the sixth, okay? The sixth is the uh, reverse of the third. So it's this. Okay, so just like uh, on the low third, it was the same fret. So now it's two strings apart instead of one. I have uh, separate lessons for third harmonies and sixth harmonies. Check them out. You can search for lick and riff third harmonies or lick and riff sixth harmonies and you'll find those lessons. They're worth your time because those are the two go-to harmonies for most soloists. Okay, so it's really important that you learn them. So in our example, it's gonna be five and five on strings two and four, seven and seven, and eight and nine, okay? Now, if we try this with the third harmony, okay, we're gonna get this. And, which is an octave. It's an octave, okay? So we got nothing really, nothing new but we can also play an octave with our original chord. You can do the octave 
two different ways. You can do it as a C chord shape using just the head finger and the high finger. Okay, meaning that you have uh, seven, um, seven, nine, and ten on the fifth string. Or you can do it three frets below on the D string. Okay, so you, so you have two, four, and five. Okay, so. Okay, this is a really good way to harmonize, especially when you're in the moment. Okay, this is a good sound. This is a good sound. Try it when you're in the zone and you will see. The octave is boring without context, but within context, with groove, it sounds amazing. Um, okay, so um, that's the octave. And that was the sixth as well. Okay. And again, it all depends on the scale. You can do... Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, you can do different sixths. Um, watch that lesson on sixth harmonies. Uh, it all depends on the scale. And it's a really good... Wait. It's a good way to solo. Now for the bass notes. The bass notes are actually one of my favorite ways to solo. You know the concept from Blackbird. And you have that. And then you have. Okay, you have all those um, different chord thirds. Okay, you have the base of the chord and you have the third of the chord, but instead of having it close, you have it an octave plus a third apart. So that's a really nice way to solo, especially if you're playing finger style. So if you have five, seven, and eight on the second string, you can uh, play a major chord or a minor chord. So again, it's up to you, it's up to the scale. So let's take this. Okay, and then I'll show you a different one. It's major, major, minor. So on the fifth string, it's gonna be three. Five and seven, okay? But it can be something entirely different. It could be minor, minor, and another minor, okay? Or a diminished chord if you want, because you can have you can have a half diminished diminished chord with these notes as well. So it can be it can be um, um, uh, four, six, and seven. It can also be, it can also be f just four, and then you have five and seven, so, okay, just four instead of three. Different results. The next one is using the fifth of that chord, meaning that instead of playing the right bass of the chord, the root note, you just play it on the sixth frame. And then you get a really wide interval. So you can do the same thing with, with three, five, and seven. Okay? Or with four, six, and seven. Okay? It sounds off to some of you, but it is within a scale. I just played a, a, a different scale a moment ago. So that's why it sounds off, but it's really not. Okay, you see? So um, you can mix between the two. You can mix between the two. You can do... Okay? You can do strings 5, 6, 5. Um, 5, 6, 6. Or you can do um, six five five. Six five six. You see? You see why this is my favorite way to solo? Okay, you can even do the same note twice with two different bass notes. Um, and depending on the scale, the, the bass note might not be on the same fret, so it might be something like this. So um, it's really interesting. 
Um, and we'll finish with weird harmonies. Um, instead of the octave, here you can do a seventh. Okay. Okay, so instead of three frets apart on the D string, you can do two frets apart. So it's five, seven, and six. Now, a really good go-to option is just one fret apart, actually. Okay, and you have this. Because it's weird and it still sounds good somehow, right? Um, you can go one fret up if you want and then it's a sixth harmony. So you can go two frets up, okay? But then it's a fifth, okay? So um, I gave you all the options. Now, okay, you can, you can dig it a, a step farther and play uh, something like this. Okay, so it's okay. If you like it, that's the last example I'll give you in this video. Um, you have five, seven, and eight, so it's one fret up on the fifth string, on the bass string. So it's okay. This is uh, this is something that John Scofield loves to use, and when you use it at the right moment, it's. It's amazing. It, it takes the listener completely by surprise. Okay? It sounds alien-ish. Um, so if it's five, seven, and eight, okay, we're going to have six, eight, and nine. Okay? Now granted, it works better on strings one and four. Okay? Because a bass note there is a little bit disruptive, especially if you have background music. But who knows, try it, um, um, it might work for you. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Remember to grab your DistroKid offer. Okay, the link below in the description. So thank you DistroKid and I will see you the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching, enjoy.